Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Mature but affordable Bordeaux. An oxymoron? Well, got five wines here that are aiming to show that it's not. Uh, and I'm just going to dig into them and see where we get to. First one I've got is a uh, 2006 Chateau Patache d'Ao uh, Medoc. Um, let's give it a whirl. Seven years old and uh, the fruit still uh, smells quite fresh. Um, there's, uh, yeah, this, this is a black currant character uh, rather than the plumminess. I, th I think, I'm not sure whether it's uh, Montmel or Cabernet Sauvignon in here. It doesn't say on the back label. Um, but um, it feels that, that, that there's a that there's slightly briny character coming through, uh, like a savoury, meaty character. I mean, Britannomyces is a factor in a, in a, in a lot of uh, in, in a lot of Bordeaux, uh, but uh, here it's there, but it's not. It doesn't feel like it's taking over the wine, uh, and uh, the, it smells like it's going to have maybe a little bit of earthy chunkiness, but um, it smells okay. And there's still plenty of juiciness there. Um, that's uh, it, it, it's strange because there's parts of it that are uh, mature. I mean, it feels like the uh, 2006 is quite a, quite a, a, a chunky um, workmanlike type of year. Uh, it's never going to be as soft and silky as the great years, but um, uh, it feels like the the tannins have softened enough to uh, to make it uh, enjoyable now. Uh, I wouldn't bother keeping it for too much longer, uh, but uh, the, the fruit still has a little bit of perky black currency freshness about it and uh, that saltiness that salinity uh, kicking in in the finish to um, uh, yeah to to add extra extra nuances and layers it's it's okay I don't mind that at all let's try wine number two uh, same vintage uh, different chateau so this is Chateau Caron Saint-Gem uh, 2006 uh, from Aude Medoc we'll give it a whirl now this feels like a fuller bodied, earthier, uh, more dusty uh, current, well, black current and current. Um, it, 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 feels, it feels younger than the, uh, the, the other 2006, uh, but it feels more concentrated and um, it smells good. It's got a little bit of that saltiness and some of the savoury, some of the bread in there too, but uh, it feels like the wine around it is, um, is, is enough to, uh, to, to, to make it a, that, that, that those things an aspect rather than a, a diff, uh, rather than fault. Gently maturing fruit um, and uh, it's, uh, there, there is that ch chunkiness, uh, probably even a little bit more chunky than the, uh, the patash dao, uh, but um, there's, um, there's, an, uh, there's a, a roundness to the, to the flesh. Uh, yes, it's funny, it's got this structure and it's got this roundness and uh, if you've got the right food, you, you certainly would never sit down and sit this by itself, uh, but if you've got the right food, I think that that would, uh, well, that would go down pretty well. Um, steak, probably, uh, something that you need, you, need, you need something with a lot of protein for that uh, tannin to bite into, but um, once you've got those um, uh, sitting nicely with each other, then there is a juiciness and a richness about the fruit, uh, probably richer fruit uh, than, than the previous one. Uh, it's funny, the, the previous one is probably more ready to drink, uh, but this one uh, maybe needs another couple of years to uh, uh, to, to get to its uh, to get to its peak, but decent wine. Wine number three. Uh, so uh, Chateau Forcas du Pré uh, from Listrac and 2005, uh, which is uh, we've got two, two from 2006, two from 2004, uh, but 2005 is the top vintage of these three. Anyway, let's try it. Now Listrac has this reputation for uh, firmness and chunkiness uh, and um, it feels, it, it's funny, there's, um, I, I don't get too much of that here. It feels, um, compared with the 2006s, it feels a, quite a lot older. Uh, also, I was talking about the, the Britannomyces, I do notice that quite a lot more here. Uh, and it's giving this savoury meatiness uh, that um, I, well, it's, it's okay. Uh, but uh, some people prefer it to others. I, I'm not. I'm not a bit fan. Of, I almost like a little bit uh, uh, more uh, cleanness and purity about my wines. It's it, it's okay. I better taste it, haven't I, before I uh, dig myself into a hole here. And there's a slightly roasted character there, like a, a chewiness. Um, and uh, but then this uh, the. 
this mature fruit kicks in, a bit of plum, a bit of black currant, more on the berry probably than the black currant. Um, it's um, maybe, if anything, it's that slightly that, that bit too mature. And I think in a vintage like this, uh, I would almost have rather seen this um, five years ago uh, than in the state it is now. It feels that in its relaxing, in its maturing, uh, it's lost uh, its youthful sprightliness and has got this slight torpor of middle age and um, and that Brett is drying out the finish and um, uh, least favourite so far. Hey, uh, wine number four. Uh, so 2004 for the final two. This is Chateau Doriac au Medoc. Uh, let's give this one a whirl. Bit of an odd one this. Um, I stick my nose in there and I get this very firm imprint um, I mean, this is nearly nine years old now, uh, but of new oak. Uh, there's this uh, smoky and slightly sawdusty, um, well, maybe maybe it's seasoning of the oak, um, but it feels like that's, uh, uh, the, the oak imprint is, was, was probably too strong uh, for the wine in the first place. Funny, the fruit behind it seems like it's got a little bit of, um, uh, of uh, a freshness still about it, but there's a, a bit of a vegetal character as well. Doesn't sound great, doesn't it? Well, better taste it, haven't I? Yeah, and that smoky bacon character of the oak, um, it really does seem to be just dominating the wine. Uh, and the wine itself feels like it's been quite well made, uh, but um, there's this character that, um, there were quite a few wines in, I think it was 1998, uh, where some of the um, the Medoc wines had, uh, it was a great year for, for the Pomerol and Saint-Emilion Merlot-based wines of the, what they call the right bank, but some of the uh, uh, the left bank ones had this uh, slightly vegetal sound celery character, and I get some of that coming through here. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, I, uh, least favourite so far, um, and uh, it's, um, it, it feels like that, that somebody, knows how to make wine but doesn't quite know when to stop. Hey, final wine. Um, it is uh, Clos Floridine Grave 2004 from Denis Dubourdieu. Give it a whirl. Well, this also seems to have a, a bit of a, a winemaking imprint, but it feels like a more sympathetic winemaking imprint. It doesn't feel like someone's tried to extract as much flavour in the first place. Um, it doesn't feel like they've smothered it in, in oak. Um, it feels like the, the, uh, they're coping well with a vintage that, where the grapes were okay. Um, so there's still a, a slightly green, um, not vegetal, green vegetal edge, but uh, it doesn't feel quite as forced maybe as, as the previous one. It smells, um, it smells pretty young actually. Very young. It still feels like it's got quite a lot of um, coming out of its shell to do. Um, there is this, um, yeah, there is this, this, this like greenness about it, but it doesn't feel as forced and it doesn't feel as, as quite as um, vegetal as the, as, as the previous one. I'm, I'm using this word vegetal a bit too much. Here, uh, it feels like it's going to go smoky, soft and tobacco-like with age, um, but there is a freshness and a juiciness about it that makes me think if I kept that for another three or four years, uh, I'd be enjoying it extremely. Um, as it is at the moment, uh, maybe if, if uh, it, I don't know if it fits into the mature character, but I wouldn't be surprised if I shoved that in a decanter and served it three hours from now, that it would be, um, it would be lovely and juicy and open. Uh, whether it would be a fine wine, uh, I don't think it would be a fine, it would ever be all, all, that, uh, all that great, but um, uh, probably, Probably my favourite of the uh, of this quintet. Uh, the two 2006s were good. Uh, those ones, those two in between, not so sure about. But um, hey, mature but affordable. Still not quite sure whether it's not an oxymoron. Hey, bye.